looking at the pawn structure that we have in front of us is uh, uh, going to tell us that the pawn chain that we have starting from f2 and ending up on d4 is pointing towards the queen side and therefore we should be organizing something on that side of the board but that's that's going to be backed up by the idea that we have no obstacles on the c file there is no pawn there anymore for white so the pieces are going to be more free to move there um, than, than, than for example what black has on that side of the board having the pawn on c6 blocking the rooks of black being active on the c file so how can white profit from the queen side space advantage mainly we cannot use only our pieces there we if we put our pieces there to to just attack with them we cannot really get anywhere because black spawns are really well defended they will be rock solid on c6 because of the b7 pawn defending it we can put thousands of pieces of white to attack c6 and you're still not going to be able to collect it because of the b7 takes c6 so what we need to do before before activating our pieces there on the queen side we'd like to use our pawns and by using pawns we'll be actually going for weakening the black spawn formation actually whatever happens to the black's queen side pawns there are gonna be new weaknesses created in their camp only so let's assume that we start marching with our pawns let's say with the b4 and then we, let's say we go with a4 and then let's say we go with b5 and then they capture it and we recapture if you can visualize what we get is basically this and i already highlighted the weaknesses that will be there on on the board for black the one on d5 becomes an isolated, isolated pawn with the absence of the pawn on c6 that pawn becomes weaker and what happened also is the a file being open for white's rooks to attack on and put pressure on this pawn on a7 that is not really the one to blame nor the neighbor pawn to blame for anything but sim simply because of the b, b pawn of white being so advanced the pawn a7 doesn't feel safe anymore so that's one of the outcomes that we can get into and for example the situation that can be created uh, with pieces on the board maybe something like this so white in this case you see is putting pressure on a7 black is defending there's this queen hitting the weakness on d5 and a couple of pieces of black defending it we can jump with the knight here we have c file we can trade here and force the queen away from the d7 if we want to or we can swing the rook to the a2 and thus create a huge pressure even strong like greater pressure on a7 and this again shows that the a7 may be, become actually the more serious the most serious weakness in black's camp but overall you can see that black's pieces are really passive while white's pieces are attacking going back to the original structure we were talking about b4 a4 b5 also black can just leave us to take on c6 something like this would occur on the board not exactly, doesn't need to be exactly the same, but the black spawn on c6 is going to be there. And I'm going to now add more pieces so that you can see how the, in a realistic way it may be happening on the board. You see here white's pieces are seriously attacking c6. Three of those already, with, while black is using three pieces to just guard that pawn. There is 95 obviously for white on the next move and the pawn most likely falls. Now, of course, black can fight some other way, like for example, after b4, react with a6, so that after b5, they take, we take, and finally we take on c6 again, and they recapture. I don't know if you can visualize it, but that's going to be something like, like this at the end. Of course, in this case, the target is obvious, again, the pawn on c6, and position that we can maybe build as white may be something like this. The knight's going to be coming to e5, attacking for the fourth time the weakness on c6 and most likely again the pawn falls let's go back again to this situation sometimes they will do a6 and after b5 they can take take and then take again on b5 of course white will be having something recapturing here and that would lead us to the position that looks like this so black will be having two weak pawns one on b7 the other one on d5 
and both of them would be considered as, as serious weaknesses. Realistically speaking, this would be a situation to kind of expect. White's attacking twice on d5, black is defending again, white is attacking here twice, black is defending. Of course, it's always better to be the one who is attacking uh, than the one that is just holding everything together or trying to. Going back to the regional, again, structure, we can also expect at some point after we challenge the black c6 pawn that black just pushes it forward. Once those two pawns are being traded on, on this square c5, black recaptures of course there, what we would get is most likely something like this. So the one on d5 is so-called an isolated pawn, which may be seen as a weakness. And what we can expect or what's the ideal for white to, to get uh, in this structure, something like that, that you can see on the board now. All the pieces of white are hitting d5, almost all of them, and the bishop potentially joining the attack. So what black is doing here is just holding this pawn on d5 in life, just trying to survive with it. While white is putting pressure, and obviously there is a serious advantage. What we can also expect from black to do is a situation when they, after b4, play a6, and after a4, they play b5. What we end up in is a situation that looks like this. And again, obviously, see the c6 pawn is a weakness, and again, c5 square as an outpost for white's pieces. Um, but also, black gets an outpost on c4, not to forget to mention, which black would like to use to bring a piece like a knight there from f6 maybe to e8 and then d6 and then c4, thus closing the c file for white's rooks. What's normally happening is that white develops strong attack along the c file and not allowing black to react in a more active way. The position that we reach is something that looks like this. And of course, if you see that black is trying to build uh, the plan related with the occupation of the c4 square, you'd like to uh, do something about it before it happens. So these are ideal situations we'd like to reach as white using the so-called minority attack and that goes with b4 and then a4 and then b5 usually backed up by the rooks on c1 and b1 i'd also like to add that if you'd be going for the minority attack you wouldn't like to go with a3 first you'd like instead to go with b4 and there if there is a need to go with uh, with a supporter for the b pawn what you'd like to do is bring the rook from a1 to b1 so that the rook is supporting that pawn to go to b4 and not the pawn from a2. And why is that so? Well, because you can lose a tempo doing first a3 and then b4. If you'd see black playing a6, you'd want to have this pawn on a4 and not on a3. And this way you play it twice with the same pawn. But if you'd play the rook on b1 and push b4 and then you see white, black going with a6, you'd be going with a4 in one move and you would have like of course, a faster attack developing there. So what you do is b4 if it's possible without any supporter, but if supporter is required, you'd put the rook on b1. And also, you, don't ever, you never go with a4 first than b4. You first always go with the b pawn, because if you'd go with a4, you'd, be, uh, you'd, you'd normally see a5, and then there will be really difficult to push b4 and not being taken of course, by the one of the black's pieces or pawn from a5. So you lose the b4 square, and even black can use it later to bring a piece there and establish control over the queen side even. Finally, you may see them pushing a5. In that case, we'd need to play a3, after which we'd be going with b4. What else we can say about the Carlsbad pawn structure is that the minority attack for white comes without weakening almost anything in white's camp. On the queen side. Let's focus on the king side for a moment and see what would happen in case we try to get more space there. First of all, our king standing on g1 doesn't allow us to freely move these pawns on the king side, especially not two squares ahead. And if we'd like to move the f pawn to kind of gain space and think of attacking the king side, you'd see that the e3 pawn becomes immediately a, a huge weakness and black's main target. If we'd be going with f3, black will probably go with f5, thus preventing e4, and then we'd be playing with, a, obviously, a little bit backwards pawn on e3, 
and black may organize pressure against it using their rooks on the open file. So what's the point of learning all this? What do we get from that? Well, mainly through this example of Carlswood pawn structure, you can also see that it's very important to read the pawn structure. To read means to understand it in order not to make mistakes playing on the side of the board where you're supposed not to. Supposed not to move your pawns at all because moving your pawns just leads to a problem. Just leads to something that your opponent needed to spend a lot of moves to create in your own in your camp to create a weakness. Now you're creating a weakness to your own position without really making your opponent work at all for it. Well, we saw that we should be building a plan on the queen side as white, playing b4, a4, b5, weakening their formation, and then attacking the target. They're not going to just voluntarily just surrender a pawn or give us a target to attack. We need to work on it, on it and that's through the minority attack. Now let's go and see how this may actually happen from the opening. How can we get into the so-called Carlsbad pawn structure? We can get into the same structure as white playing the d4, and after d5, c4, and after e6, we can already here just by taking on d5, and of course expecting black to recap recapture the pawn, get to the structure that looks like it. After a couple of more moves, we can see white playing e3 and black playing c6, and there you go, you have that structure. Of course, you're not going to do e3 for, until the bishop gets out. Clear cut line where you can actually get into the Carlsbad if you prefer, if you'd like to play that way. You can use the d4, c4, so called Queen's Gambit exchange variation. Now, another way to get into it is by playing first move e4. And if they choose the Karo Khan, you can really get into the structure called Carlsbad again. However, this time white is the one with the you see pawn chain directing towards the king side. So it's completely opposite to what we had before as white. Now we are basically taking the black pawn structure, but the plan is going to be the same at least for black, attacking on the queen side and creating a weakness in white's camp on that side of the board. Next time we're going to be discussing how to play the Carlsbad pawn structure with the pawn chain directing towards the king side.